In this example, we want to find the probability density function of the sum of two independent uniform 0, 1 random variables. Well, the first step is to give some names to those uniform 0, 1 random variables. So x1 is uniform 0, 1, x2 is also uniform 0, 1. Since x1 is uniform 0, 1, its probability density function will be f of x1, which is 1 for x1 values between 0 and 1. And the probability density function for x2 will be f of x2 is 1 for x2 values between 0 and 1. Now the question asks for the probability density function of the sum of two of these. So the interest now is going to be in y, which is x1 plus x2. But a couple things you'll know because we're using the transformation technique. We've got to come up with both a y1 and also a y2. So we have to come up with a dummy transformation. And in this case, I could use x2. But this time I'll use x1 minus x2 as a dummy transformation just to try something um, different than we did before. Now that is that leads us to step one. And step one is to determine the support script A. Well, script A will be the values of definition for the random variables x1, x2. You can see that they are defined on the unit square. So this will be such that 0 is less than x1 is less than 1 and 0 is less than x2 is less than 1. So there is script A. That leads us to step 2. In step 2, we determine the joint probability density function of x1 and x2. Now in this particular case, because we have assumed that the two random variables are independent, we know that the joint distribution will be the product of the two marginal distributions. 1 times 1 is 1, so that will be defined for, got to go back a page, going the wrong direction here. That will be defined for x1 values between 0 and 1 and x2 values also between 0 and 1. So that completes step 1 and step 2. That takes us to step 3. And in step 3, you ask the question, is this transformation, namely g1 of x1 and x2, which is defined to be their sum, and y2, which is g2 of x1 and x2, which is the dummy transformation. We decided that this would be the difference of the two. Is that a one-to-one -one transformation? Well, the easy answer is, well, it's linear. Therefore, it is a one-to-one -one transformation. But I'm not going to take the easy road here because you will run into problems where they are not linear transformations. So here is the set script A, which is the support of the random variables x1 and x2. And I'm going to put a point down here, which I'll call lowercase a. That's the point 0, 0. That maps to the point 0, 0. And 0, 0 is right here. So that is where a maps to. Now let's put a b in place. How about the point 1, 0? Well, 1, 0 maps to the point 1, 1, and the point 1, 1 is right here. So that is what B maps to. How about the point 1, 1? We'll call that point C. 1, 1 maps to 2, 0, so that is mapping right here. And finally, this point right here, we'll label that as D. That is 0, 1. That maps to the point 1, minus 1. That point is right down here. So you'll notice what's happening is this square, unit square, is getting flipped upside down and rotated over to here. 
but it is a one-to-one -one transformation. You can take any point you want in here. It'll map to a single point over here, and that point will map right back to here. So the answer here is yes, this is a one-to-one -one transformation. So we can move forward because of that with the transformation technique, and we can move to step four. And step four is finding those inverses. So x1 is g1 inverse of y1 and y2. If you add these two equations, the x2s drop out. And when you solve for x1, you get y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And then when you solve for x2, which will be g2 inverse of y1 and y2, you can find that by subtracting these two equations. In that case, x2 drops out. And when you solve, you will get y1 minus y2 divided by 2. And that is the inverse transformation. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to find the Jacobian because you know you'll need that later. And so here is the Jacobian. First thing we do is we take the partial derivative of x1 with respect to y1, and that is 1 half. And then we take the partial derivative of x1 with respect to y2, and that is also 1 half. And then we take the partial derivative of x2 with respect to y1, and that is 1 half. And finally, we take the partial derivative of x2 with respect to y2, and that is negative 1 half. And you know the Jacobian of a, a or the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is going to go like this. So we have negative 1 fourth minus 1 fourth, and that gives you negative 1 half. There's your Jacobian. So that brings us to step 5, and step 5 is establishing the region script B. Here is the region script B. I won't write it out here. You could, though, um, by laying in all of the constraints on that um, square region. So that takes us to step six. And step six is to find the joint probability mass function f, y1, y2, of y1 and y2. Well, in this particular case, that will be the joint distribution f x1, x2 of g inverse of y1, y2. And that's g1 inverse. And then g2 inverse of y1 and y2 times the absolute value of the Jacobian. In this particular case, we're very fortunate. This joint PDF was 1, so it doesn't matter what transformation you plug in. You just get 1. And the absolute value of the Jacobian was negative 1 half. So the absolute value of negative 1 half is positive 1 half. And that is for y1 and y2, an element of script B. If you want the geometry behind that, if you go back a slide, you will notice that this picture right here, each side of this square has length square root of 2, which means that the area of this square is 2, which means basically if you have a joint probability density function of y1 and y2, which is 1 half, this thing is floating up above this square one half unit off of the page. And so that is the joint distribution of y1 and y2. But we don't want the joint distribution of y1 and y2. We only wanted the distribution of the sum of two independent random variables. And so this will be found by integrating out y2. We want to get rid of it. Now, unfortunately, in this case, we've got to integrate over two different regions and on the previous page you'll see why. As y1 goes from 0 to 2 
the upper and lower limits change. So if I run my strips up and down here, which I have to do, I will have various different functions here. For example, this one right here is y2 equals 2 minus y1. The lower curve down here is y2 equals y1 minus 2. And then when you go to the upper curve here, it will be y2 equals y1, just that 45 degree line from the origin and the lower curve down here will be y2 is equal to negative y1. Now with all of those upper and lower curves in place you can set up the appropriate integrals and what they will be is they will be the integral from minus y1 to positive y1 of 1 half dy2. That's an easy integral to calculate. It turns out to be just y1. And here you will have the integral from y1 minus 2 up to 2 minus y1. Again, the integrand is 1 half, which is the joint probability density function dy2. And when you integrate that out, you get 2 minus y1. This is good for y1 values between 0 and 1. This is good for y1 values between 1 and 2. If you were to take a look at this distribution and plot it, you would see that here is y1 and here is f sub y1 of y1, it runs from 0 to 2, and it looks like this. There's a 45 degree line right there going upwards, and here is a 45 degree line coming downwards, and that is the triangular distribution. So y1, which we are giving as x1 plus x2 turns out to be the triangular distribution. This is sometimes counterintuitive because people can sometimes say, well, if you add up two uniform zero ones, you should get a uniform zero two, but you don't. Just as when you roll a pair of fair dice, you're not uniformly distributed between two and 12. Seven is the most likely. So finally, to confirm this in Apple, you can set x1 to a uniform 0, 1, x2 to a uniform 0, 1, and then set y to the sum or convolution of x1, x2. They will confirm that x1 plus x2 has the triangular distribution.